Hi again. If you've seen earlier episodes of our channel, you know that we installed a water maker. This one, a Spectra Aventura 200, the non automated version. So the simplest one. The thing is that it doesn't work like it should work. I checked everything 500,000 times and everything is connected like it should. So that's not a problem. And when I switch it on, the feed pump works fine. You hear the pump running. You can hear the water going through the clock pump. And you can hear the water going overboard over here. The problem is that the clock pump, the most important part of the whole system, doesn't work like it should. So water is running through the clock pump and through the membrane housing overboard. But when I close the pressure relief valve, it's doing nothing. I should hear uh, like a chuklunk sound, as the people at Spectre call it, and I don't hear anything. And the water stops running, so the pressure is building up. Another problem is that this gauge is not working. Even when I close the brine outlet completely, the gauge still doesn't go up. So there is a problem. I made email contact with the people at Spectra and they are very, very helpful. Andrew, thanks for all the info. I kind of borrowed their brains and uh, we tried to figure out what could be the problem. So they, uh, they gave me some ideas of what to check. And what I'm gonna do today is um, Take apart the clock pump as far as necessary and then we'll see what the problem is. And also with the gauge, I don't get it why it doesn't do anything because it's quite a simple system. So after consulting with the people at Spectra, I'm going to first remove the cylinder blocks from the, from the center block. They can be removed without removing this as far as I saw. But to do that, I first need to remove those because otherwise it will get stuck here. So I'm first gonna remove this from the socket. Number 10. So let's see how much space we have over here. Not too much, but enough. So normally the easiest thing would be to remove those rubbers, but when I installed the clock pump, they were already cracked here, two of them, and I had to glue them together. So I rather leave them and just take off these two plates so these can stay in place. These are 30 millimeters. I always try to uh, keep the parts that I uh, take apart in good order because I'm a total chaotic so I can lose them very easily and don't know where they belong anymore. So to be clear, this is not a tutorial. Uh, I'm just trying to find what the problem is. I'm an amateur and that's how you should look at a video. I put this underneath it because I think there will be water coming out when I remove those cylinders and salt water. So better not have that in a boat. At Spectra they say for all those bolts not more than hand tight because it's not the bolts that make it waterproof, it's the seals that make it waterproof. That's with everything. And the reason for that is that some of it is plastic and some of it is plastic with uh, kind of uh, metal inserts in it. So when you put too much tension on those bolts, uh, the blocks are going to crack and uh, then you have a problem. I mean this stuff is seriously expensive. For us it is. Anyway. So there's a little bit of water coming out already. It's not that much, see? So let's see what's happening here. Man, these seals are totally brittle. It's totally nothing anymore. So it's clear I need to order a new set of seals because these seals already are totally brittle. It must be very old. 
so they just need to be replaced. Uh, as far as I saw, that was in the US at least 250 and 220 US for just the seals. So I guess here in Greece it's uh, one third more, I guess. Don't hope so. But Spectre gave me an address of a dealer here in Greece. So luckily we can order it over here. So we'll see how fast it gets here. <laughs> Most of the time, it's a long wait. Try to use two of these ones or two wrenches when you take something apart. Actually, a mechanic should have three or four hands. Ah, uh, here it is. So this is a high pressure tube and this cone fits into a cone in here. So as I said, the water maker needs a rebuild. I need to renew all the seals. I look what's inside. If there's gunk or there's whatever in it that prevents the water maker from working because it doesn't do anything. The pressure gauge doesn't work. The water maker doesn't work. You don't hear the, the switching inside the Clark pump. So enough work, I guess. So luckily in Greece, there is a Spectra dealer in Athens. Luckily they have these seal sets. So it was within two days, which is an absolute miracle here in Greece. Nice. Very helpful dealer, by the way. He replies very quickly, so that's very nice. And uh, sent me pictures and very helpful, very informative. Thanks, man. So this is the seal set. You probably wouldn't say, but this is 186 euros worth of rubber. Which I think is quite a lot of money, but I'm happy we could get it and so quickly. Just when the lockdown began, I, uh, we got it over here with, uh, with the courier. So I can start working on the water maker. The thing is you need some tools to get the old seals out. And one of them is a kind of dentist pig which they don't sell here, over here, and I don't want to pay a lot of money to get the official one. So what I found is this, welding electrodes. So I want to make a, a pick out of, of this, the metal of this, and see if I can use that. Let's see what I can use. I need a file, uh, like this one. And a plier, not this one, yes, yes. Maybe. And of course, my not so good anymore knife. I don't know precisely how long these parts should be, so I'm just uh, trying. Trial and error is my passion. Error. <laughs> no. So I hope this will get me somewhere. I need to sharpen this up, but with a little bit of a curve so the tip can find its way under the seals. I think I'm getting close. So I'm gonna disassemble this chunk of metal. Let's see what's inside, how the seals are. You know already that I have new seals. And uh, if there's gunk in it or if parts got stuck, something must uh, got stuck, otherwise it would have worked. It was not leaking yet, so that can't be the, the problem. Or there must be some internal leakage because of which the thing doesn't work anymore. So we'll see. I already opened these, of course. But I close it up again to not get any uh, dirt or whatever in the in the pump. The only things that connect the cylinders to the center block is those four uh, is those four bolts. That's all. Le moment suprême. And then the other side. 
Oh, some water left. Doesn't matter. I hope you can see it in the camera, but over there I already see some stuff that's not supposed to be there. Some some gunk, some rust material. It's white, so I don't know what it is. Maybe it's some leftovers from this seal. These seals are also very brittle, see? Just break very easily. So they're old. There is some brown stuff over here. Don't know what it is. Doesn't seem too bad. I can see some deformation over here. Deformation is never good. I don't know what to think of the cylinder yet. It feels smooth. When I use my nail, I don't feel any grooves, so that should be okay. Oh yeah, there's a little length groove over here. Don't know how bad it is for the working of this machine. It's not that difficult to get this plunger out. Just close one of those gaps, blow, and there it is. I was actually planning not to take this pipe off, but because I already can see inside that there's a, a lot of gunk in the pipe, I'm going to remove that anyway. This rod runs to the center block and that's where the pistons push against. So from one side to the other. At least that one comes out easily. I'm wondering though what they did with it. I mean, how can you get those kind of grooves in this rod that's just fitting in a Teflon piston or whatever material it may be. Somebody used a plier on that or something? I don't know. You gotta be careful removing these. So you keep this in this position and then first loosen this nut. After which you can remove this one. This is the pressure relief valve. And of course there's a seal. Looks okay. We are going to leave uh, this bolt where it is because it's just to blind of this hole. There's the same hole on the other side so you can choose which I, you use depending on the situation. This is the pilot valve. It actually steers the reversing valve that's in the upper block. So that reverses the direction of the water flow. So we're gonna need to get this ring out that keeps the pilot valve inside. Always careful that they don't spring to the other side of the room. So you should get this out by just putting pliers on this one and just carefully pull. That's it. O-ring looks fine. No gunk inside. Also nice. We're going to do it the same at the other side. Just place the tip of a knife in here hook it behind it and carefully get it out so this is too short to grab so I guess I need to pull from the other side yes and then again carefully wiggle a little not too much that's it and here is still the pilot valve, so we have to push that out with whatever you have. And there it is. And then there's the check valves. They prevent water from flowing back in the direction where it came from. So to always go this same direction. They're quite easy to remove. Always careful. This is uh, the old system. As far as I know, nowadays they have uh, stainless steel sp springs. Uh, this works. Other side. Yeah. 
this is a little sketchy because you don't want to damage the seating inside here. But I don't have any special uh, tools over here, so, so I have to be a, a little creative. Also for these ones, these seatings, which are the same as these, but just the other way around, I don't have any special tool. So from the rear side, I push it gently against the seat, uh, the underside of the seating. Do some soft ticking. Other side. And there it is. See, no damage. As long as you do it carefully, no problem. I'm first going to divorce the center block and uh, whatever top block. Separate. <laughs> first going to separate the center block and the top block or whatever it's called. See what's happening over here. Mm. Oh, the seal's still in place, which is normal because they can't go anywhere. These are still flexible, but you can see, I hope, that these are flattened a little because they're old. But they're still uh, rubbery. Seal of the check valve fittings. Four pieces. The test port bolt. I don't know if it was such a bright idea from the factory to change the stainless steel fittings for bronze fittings. That's what I understood because they're corroding. And you can see that over there. You see the green and brown stuff? That's corrosion. So this block is ready, it's a center block where the cylinders are connected with. It's actually a massive block where they, uh, where they drilled holes in or maybe it was made like this, I don't know. So now I'm going to take uh, apart the top end in which you'll find the reverse valve. Same story. It has eight of these bolts, four on both sides. So let's see what's underneath here. There's that sticker. I don't have a new sticker, so I try to keep it, I think. Try to keep it in one piece. And this is that reverse valve. Also seals look good, but all this flattened. And the other side. Same story. Ooh. I think that maybe this is the culprit. Or maybe it should be like this, I don't know. These two rings can go. Again, I need to remove some seals, some O-rings. Little ones. They're all flattened. But they still look good. Here the big one. So, and I should be able to push out this reversing valve spool. Yes, here it comes. And actually I hoped to find something that was stuck. But up till now I still didn't find anything. I see some black stuff here, but seems nothing wrong. So what is the reason that this thing doesn't work anymore? These are the annular rings. Still don't know what they're for. <laughs> you can see that this, uh, this water maker hasn't been used for way too long. I don't know if you see it on camera, but there's a, a, a black kind of rim in the back of the annular, annular ring. And here at this side, 
it's at the front. So this reversing spool valve has been sitting on this side for a long time. I think I remember the previous owner said he didn't use it for two years. But it's just dirt and no damage. So now I need to get these pistons out. And this is connected to this. I don't have any compressed air to blow into this hole to get this out. So I'm gonna try to blow. There's also compressed air, not too compressed, I guess. It's coming up, but I need to, there's a little hole over here. And I need to close that to get pressure under that piston. But when I close that with my, with my finger, this piston can't come up. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's, Difficult. So these ones should come out quite easily, but these ones don't. Can't blow hard enough. That's not good for my brains. Not gonna work. The other one, the same problem. It doesn't even come up a little bit. Maybe this is part of the problem of the malfunction of this water maker. I hope so, because that's the last thing I'm gonna take out. They both got stuck, so I hope that is the problem. But the problem is how to get it out. It's coming a little bit. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. Yes. Ta-da! I hope my leg is still in one piece, but they came out and that's the most important thing. This thing has really been doing nothing for too long. Luckily, this is just dirt or parts of the, of the seal. So I only have to remove the seal now. This is a hard one. Ah, here it comes. It's still very flexible, that's okay. Feels good. And number two. These are a little different, see? There's a little canal at the bottom. This side not. As far as I know, in the past they had a flow meter here that measured the amount of times that reverse valve went up and down. By the way, all the blocks look really good. There's no cracks, there's no corrosion you don't have in plastic, but there's no cracks, no rotting, no corrosion at the, at the inserts, nothing. So that's a positive thing. The only thing that's left to do now is getting the seals out of the center block and then cleaning up the whole thing. And I think these are the most difficult to get out. <laughs> but with my special tool, no problem, I think. So in here, there are two uh, seals, one on both sides. And as far as I know, this is kind of double seal, inner seal and outer seal. And here are four little seals in a row. So let's try. Ah, here you see, this is just the inner seal. And there the outer seam is coming too. See? And again, first the inner seal comes out. No problem. I need to replace them anyway. Come on. This is actually the same. You can't see those well. You need to slide your dentist pick towards the seal and then try to get it underneath. So I couldn't really show you this one. <laughs> Look what happens to my homemade dentist pick. But I have one out already. They're hard to get out. There's quite stiff, hard rings. So only three to go. Okay, next one. The thing is that these seals are so hard, not hard, it's just st stiff, strong, but they don't really want to come out. You can't easily get the tip of the pick underneath them. And I still have to watch out not to damage the wall. Am I allowed to cry? A uh, tip from the guys at Spectra is to put the block in uh, soapy warm water 
to, uh, to get the seals more flexible, softer. So that's what I'm doing. Not too hot, a little bit of dishwashing soap. So let's see what happens. So it has been in there for five minutes. Let's see how this works. I think I need a stronger pig. <laughs> Maybe if I change the pick a little bit, so it's more like uh, 90 degrees and the tip is a little bit more like that. So let's see. I have three of them out now, as you see, and there's still one in it. I'm going to put some more dishwashing soap in it to speed up the process. And yes, at last, number four. Makes me so happy. So that did the trick. Some warm soapy water and then some extra soap in it but uh, I think I have to make a new one <laughs> the only thing left in the blocks are the annual rings but I leave them in there because there's no grooves in it or whatever they feel good so no need to uh, pull them out with the risk that I uh, damage something <laughs> what I'm trying to do now <laughs> is keep Anya out of the frame of my camera because when you're at the edge of a frame and it's wide angle lens, you get a you get a head like like this. <laughs> it doesn't really look good. So um, where was I? Oh yeah. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> and she says like a real woman. Oh, so I'm not pretty. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> it's because of the wide angle lens. Anyway, she still loves me, and I found this a normal wrench because. To uh, unscrew this, I have this, but I need to hold this one back, otherwise uh, this comes with it and it won't go well. So that's the reason. So let's see how this looks. It doesn't look good. It's corroded. So I don't think the choice for brass uh, fittings is a good one. Because I am afraid that some of this has damaged the, the cylinder wall. So look, this is the bronze one and this is a stainless steel one. The stainless steel it is a little bit rusted but way better than the bronze fitting, see? Which is a shame, otherwise the cylinders would probably have been perfect. This is the inside of the cylinder. There's some corroded material from the bronze plug in the hole. And you can see it better from this side. See, should be round. So that needs a good clean up. Actually, I would rather buy more of those, more of the stainless steel stuff. But especially with this total lockdown and most of the shops closed, I doubt if I can find this. So I'm cleaning up the cylinders now. Ta-da! Cleaning! I think it's important to uh, give everything a good clean when a water maker is neglected for such a long time. This one has at least been out of use for two years, maybe longer, I don't know. And uh, I think it wasn't pickled or whatever. So for example, in these openings, there was a lot of gunk from the corroded fittings. You really need to remove all the dirt out of the threads, otherwise you can damage those blocks when you screw in the metal fittings. Oh, by the way, I cannot get these caps up because I don't have the tools for it. Can't get them over here. Um, they're not leaking, no signs of leakage anyway. So I leave them for now. As you can see, these fittings are heavily corroded. I cleaned them up already a bit. I'm gonna reuse them as far as the, the thread is still okay and there's no corrosion anymore that can come off. I think it's okay. These fittings, I cannot get them here and the original Spectrum ones are uh, quite expensive. So I'm just gonna use them again. I'm uh, using some fine sandpaper 220 to smoothen up the inside a little.
to be clear about these fittings, these are especially made for Spectra. It is nickel bronze. Normally bronze is made of copper and tin, but these ones are nickel bronze, so copper and nickel. The reason for that and the reason that they replaced the original stainless steel fittings for these nickel bronze fittings is that the stainless steel expanded more and crimped more with temperature differences. And sometimes that caused cracks in the, in the cylinder blocks and all. And the positive thing about these nickel bronze fittings is that they actually hardly expand. The downside of it is that they corrode way easier than, uh, than stainless steel and salt water. You saw the difference earlier between those and the stainless steel fittings. Actually, you need to check those every two years. Get them out and check them on corrosion. As you can see, there's enough stuff coming out of this one. So this is the worst problem. There has been stuff in between the cylinder wall and the piston. So that's why these grooves are in the piston. Now I can choose for two things. I can take a very fine sandpaper and sand it, but then you lose some material, which I don't want. And you can clearly feel those grooves, but also you feel that there's uh, material standing up. So instead of uh, using sandpaper, I use a smooth piece of metal and go over it carefully, and you feel that it's gonna be smoother. Actually, you pushing back that material that is standing out a little. It's of course, thousands of millimeters, but every little bit helps. Yes, I know it's not the best choice. I know the best choice is uh, buying new pistons and new cylinders, but that's all way too expensive for us. Just gonna try, if it works, it's fine. Maybe we lose a few liters per hour, that's fine too. As long as it works, we're happy. So, what did I learn up till now about this particular water maker? Let me tell you. After cleaning up as good as possible, I can see that the inside of the cylinders is different. Don't ask me why. All the threads everywhere are still good, no problem. One thing though, as hard as I try, I cannot get these caps off. So I bought some, uh, some tool to get them off to no avail. I'm not a little boy, but still. Now it looks like this one is glued together for some reason. I don't know if this is screwed in normally, but this looks different. There's some, some kind of glue in between. So I'm wondering if they did the same with this. I'm not gonna try it because I'm afraid I'll break it. Then all the moving parts and the small not moving parts. I cleaned everything up and they look quite okay. Except for those bronze fitting of course which I showed you earlier were heavily corroded. I think after cleaning them up and uh, making them kind of shine again that I can uh, still use them luckily. Because these ones are $140 per piece. I told you about the scratches in the pistons and the cylinders. We'll have to see if it still works or not. The rest seems quite okay. What I see is that one of those pistons still have a, I think it's a magnet in it. As far as I know, it's from the old system in which they measured the amount of liters coming out per hour by the stroke of this piston. They don't use that anymore. Or this particular water maker is just a collection of different parts from different old uh, water makers joined together to make one working water maker. I don't know, it doesn't really matter anymore because we bought it and we have to get this thing working again. Um, the rest actually looks good. The seatings of the check valves uh, look fine. So it is time to screw this thing together again. Wish me good luck. Which is a stupid thing to say actually, because the moment that you see this video, this thing is running again. Or not, but I've done it anyway. So everything is clean and ready to put together again. Here I have the seals. It is a, a complete seal package for the whole clock pump. It cost me about 186 euros. So what's in it? Oh. <laughs> Of course, there's a, a list with all contents, so this should all be in it. And here, which is a handy thing, are sheets with all the seals on it at the right dimensions. So I can lay them on these sheets and then uh, see if it's complete and if it's the right uh, sizes. Let's see what's more in the bag. Some high pressure connection, whatever cones. And I see there is newer type springs for the check valves. And then a lot of small seals and the bigger seals, of course. And then some moly code 111 compound. Little grease to grease up all the seals before putting them in. So let's start this thingy. This is what I found up till now. As you can see, I don't have all the seals. 
but it could be that those papers are meant for uh, several different clock pumps because you have a 7%, 10%, 20% fresh water outlet. So it could be that for several pumps you need several seals and several dimension seals. In this package of seals are more seals than I need probably. It seems that the drawings are quite precise. So I'm gonna check if everything is here with, the, with this list and then I start putting everything together. SO HPP VP valve port seal 6. Yep. It looks like everything is here. I checked everything off on the list as a kind of afterthought. I thought it would be wise to uh, also remove those annual rings to replace the seals that are underneath it. Because I thought there's so many old and crumbling seals in it that it would be wise to replace everything. So that's what I'm gonna do, and I do it like this. Don't do this at home. Find some uh, original tools from Spectra. What I do is using an old, very rounded screwdriver, so without any sharp edges, I'm gonna place it at the inside of the ring of the on the other side, see? Place it in between those two blocks, so the ring can go out. And very carefully with a kind of rubber hammer, I take very, very softly. Watch out that you don't scratch the inside of the annual rings. Very softly, round and round a little bit. Look, you see it's already coming out a little bit. So again, Spectra has a special tool for this. So keep that in mind. Again, this is not a tutorial. This is just how I do it. Almost there. Yes. I'm happy I also take these ones out because they're also crumbling, see? So this seal is just gone. I can't even get it out in one piece. So it's good that I do this one too. It's just... It. Yeah, it's just breaking. So this is what is left from the annual ring seals. It, it breaks so easily. It's totally gone. I first wanted to leave these ones in because I was afraid I would damage the annual rings because I didn't have the, the special tools. But because uh, I heard that the new seal is a stronger one, a stiffer one, I thought just let me try it very carefully and I'm glad I did it because, well, you see how it looks. And now the second one, that should be easier because I can get to it easier now the other one is gone. Same problem, the seal is totally gone. There's also two inner seals over there and they're as bad as the first ones. So these are the four seals. I am so happy I decided to do those annual rings anyway. So just to be sure, I'm gonna flush this uh, block to get all the little parts out. There's always a chance that you leave something behind and that's not good. Time to put the new seals in. As you can see, AR means annual rings. So these four are to put in there. The deepest one should go in here and the other one in there. Oh, as you can see, this is not a white one. These are black. It's uh, They're stiffer, they say, and uh, better quality than the first ones. Which is a good thing, because they were totally crumbled. That's it. Easy peasy. And then the other one. Always check if they're okay, they're at the right place, no strange things, yes looks good. Now the other side, then we are going to put in the annual rings, watch in the inside if there's actual grooves. If there are, put them on the inside, so if they're on this side of the, of the holes, put them in like that. So I'm gonna use a little of this grease over here, it's I think it's kind of silicone grease. Anyway, you can do it with soapy water too doesn't really matter. So what you do is grease the inside of the cylinders and the outside of the annual rings. So it's going to slide in easy. I can do it by hand except for the last little edge you see. So I need to uh, punch it in a little. And the other side Yes, 
it also needs to go a little further. So again, boys and girls, don't do this at home. But I found a, a socket that fits precisely on those angular rings. It is steel, so you gotta be very careful, but the part that touches the annual ring is at the outside. Feels like it's there. Perfect, perfect. Other side, precisely in the middle. Perfect. Then I'm gonna put in the piston. Again, a little grease to make it easier to put it in, to not force it too much. Easy again. That's it. Next ones are those side blocks. Let's see, that's the orange ones. That's a simple one. It's a very flexible ring. The other one done. So again, a little grease. And this should slide in easily. Yep. The other one. And again, easy. So what seals do I need for these? These are the little ones. I need four of them. And then two of those. Those holes. And then these bigger ones. Off of that. I cleaned up the eight bolts that keep those blocks together. What I'm gonna do now, that was a tip I heard, is grease those uh, holes a little bit so that the, the seals will stick in it and they don't go anywhere. All right, so the two little ones, then the big one around the spool over here. If it doesn't fit nicely, you have the wrong one. The smaller one here, that's it. So this is the block you start with, this is where the pressure relief valve is, right? That's on the front side of your clock pump. So like this, and then you have those other two blocks and there's holes in it that have to line up. So theoretically you can put it like this, but then the holes don't line up and it doesn't work. So watch out that you line up the holes, right? And then not to forget this spacer which uh, I reuse because it's not in the new set. And then just bolt them together. A little bit of grease. So as soon as you feel it's neatly going into the thread, then you can turn them further. Always do across this side, this side, this side, this side. Every time a little bit tighter. Don't ask me how tight, I don't know. So I can tell you, don't overdo it, but I don't know how much that is overdoing. I just don't know. And then again, for the second block, this little seal, those two seals, the big seal, and the spacer around the spool. Always watch out, there's nothing in between the blocks. And then again, the bolts. You gotta be careful with those bolts not with the bolts but with the thread of those holes here because when you just turn it and uh, you turn it in on the wrong spot you ruin the thread and because it's a kind of plastic you gotta watch out and what you do normally is turn back a little till you feel it click you hit a click and then turn it the right way so you know that's where the beginning of the thread is so and the last thing pressure relief valve this thingy Put some grease on the thread and also a little grease on the tip. Put the seal on, screw it in, and then a little bit back so it's open. And by the way, if you really want to be sure whether you did it well, look into this hole. You can see right through it, so the holes are in line. Ta da! Now you have two brine outlets on both sides, one, and you're just going to use one. Uh, in our case, the brine outlet is on this side, so I'm going to plug this off. 
This is uh, a kind of hard plastic and this is a plastic fitting to blind off this hole. And because this is plastic, I'm not gonna use the Teflon tape because this should be closed off now. Let's see, not too tight. Next step is the center block. Ta-da! Later on, this is gonna fit on here, like this. But first we need to put in uh, all kinds of seals, which is way easier when this block is not connected to that block. So now just to show you how we need to work over here. Look, Anya is being sweet over there, doing translation work. And I am sitting over here, trying to get this on film for you guys. This is what I see when I'm trying to work and put all those uh, nasty seals into that block. So you can imagine, it takes some extra time to work like this. So what I'm first going to do is the seals for the piston rod. What I found on the internet is that there are special tools from Spectra, but because I don't have it, I'm going to use the piston rod and stick it in here approximately to the place where the slit is to uh, make it easier for myself to get that seal in. Let's see, this is for the piston rod. I have two types for the 7% and for the 10% uh, Clark pump, we have the 10% Clark pump, so I need those ones. Oh, by the way, watch out that you put it in like this. This is the two-part seal. This is the closed side, this is the open side. The open side needs to be outside because the water pressure is going that way. Again, I'm going to put a little grease everywhere so it will slide in easier. Then put in the piston rod and feel where the slit is. Open side and the outside against the piston rod and then carefully try to slide in. I feel it click inside. It's not straight yet. I hope you can see it. See? Try to work it a little. Now it's good. So for the other side we better push in the rod via the other side because otherwise you're gonna push against the, the seal. And when I do it like this it's easier. So, and now we do the same at the other side. Next one I'm going to do is the pilot valve seal, four times PV pilot valve. So, we need these ones. This is the pilot valve, probably the most difficult one to do, because it is a narrow hole and there's four seals in it deep down there. See? Now I know for sure that uh, Spectra has a special tool for that, which I don't have. So I'm going to use the pilot valve itself and my very tricky tools, chopsticks. <laughs> I hope it works. I'd rather eat some decent Chinese food with it. But uh, today I'm going to use it for pilot valve seals. So I put the video light, which is just a very cheap uh, household, whatever light, so you can see it a little better, I hope. I'm going to put in this pilot valve, ta -da, and then push it back. So I better do the middle two ones first. Oh, this is hard to see. But as you can see, the pilot valve is just next to the second slit. Again, a little bit of silicone grease, and then I'm going to try to slide it in with my other chopstick. I need to watch out that it doesn't go into the first slit. It's going to be difficult to get it out again. So it looks like it is in, but ah, the first slit. I push it as far as possible. I'm just going to push it against the pilot valve. For some reason, this makes me a little nervous. I don't know why. Maybe because in the past I have uh, ruined quite a lot of stuff by just doing it wrong. I'm hoping everything goes according to plan. Otherwise I'll need to order new seals, which is a uh, expensive business. So it took me a while, but as you can see, I hope I get all four of them in. So of course, it's always good to use the uh, official tools, but if you don't have them, just be creative and use your brains, your common sense, so that you don't uh, ruin the seals, but do the job anyway. Next thing I'm going to do are check valves or one-way valves. With these valves water can just flow in one direction. The other direction it is blocked. And I need the CVS check valve seat seal. So I don't know if you can see it, but it's a shame there is a little scratch in one of the seats. 
I try blowing through this check valve just with my mouth to see if there's a little air coming through. Nothing's happening, but of course, it, this is about high pressure. So I hope it closes enough not to uh, have any influence on the working of the pump. So I'm going to put the seals around those seats. It's an easy job, as you can see. it. I cleaned all the different parts just with water and soap nothing uh, nothing special. These are the check valve retainers then you have the washer you put in and that is for the spring but these were the old springs I think it's Teflon or something and in the new seal kit they put some stainless steel springs they are better than the old ones of course and then you can put in the valve itself which goes on the seating so if water is coming in to this side it's pushing down the valve but it's when it's coming from the other side it pushes the valve against the seat so no water is going through of course we have four check valves one has to go in one way and the other one has to go in the other way which one has to go where well it is simple this is feed water inlet so feed water comes in here and has to go that way or this way that means that the valve has to go this way and the other side that way because otherwise the water gets stuck already at the inlet I'm not going to use any grease in here because I have the feeling that it needs to stay there and the other side So see, the seating is this side and this side. So the valves are going to go in here. They can go this way to let the water into the clock pump and that way to close it off when it wants to go back. We don't put in the other valve seats the same way because they need to go the other way around. But I think I'm going to wait with putting those valves in till the moment that we're going to screw the cylinders on so that they don't fall out. The other one is going to be easier because the seating will be on top and because of the seal it will stay there, it will not fall out. So we're going to put in the retainer, then washer, then the new springs, then the valve should go into the hole, see, and then as last that one. So I'm going to test it with my chopstick. Yes, works fine. Next thing I'm going to put in is the pilot valve spool, a little grease to get it along the seals. Then these thingies. That's it. It's two different parts. Again, a little grease. This is going in. Just put them in like this. You can put them in with your nails. That's far enough to get the circlip in the slot here. And then the new circlips. You always need to check those kind of things to be sure they're in that slit. It's turning freely, so that's okay. You can feel them click in anyway, but always make sure it's not falling out. That's it. So next thing are the seals over here. And this should be, I guess, the end cap center block seal. There should be four in the seal kit, but as far as I know, I only need two. So it sticks a little in here. It fits precisely, so this, these should be the right ones. And then I need to get this one in. So again, Spectra has a special tool for this. I don't have it, so I just use a lot of grease and the special tool should have a rounded edge over here so this one is a bit rounded too so I don't know if that's such a problem I'm gonna do it very carefully and turn it a little no, not gonna work
So I forgot to film it, but I saw that the other side of the piston rod had a more rounded edge. So I got that through very easily. So that's it too without damaging the seal, which is nice. By the way, if you don't have that special tool yourself and you want to do this, uh, I guess it is no problem to round off one of the ends of this piston with a little file. Not too much, just enough that it goes through that uh, seal. But again, this is no tutorial. This is how I would do it. So now the cylinders. Like I said earlier in this video, there were some grooves. What I understood from the Spectra peoples was that if the grooves are so deep that your nail gets stuck behind it, they are too deep. But when I feel not one of them is too deep, so I hope it is good enough to reuse. I think so. Oh, and by the way, like I said, I didn't get those uh, caps off. They were not leaking as far as I could see before I disassembled everything. So I keep them there for now because I'm afraid that if I put more power on it than I did now, it will crack or break or whatever because this is hard material and of course this is hard material although this is a kind of composite plastic or whatever you want to call it i'm going to use uh, some teflon tape just to be sure this is the way you do teflon tape because you screw it in like this you don't want to roll off the teflon tape again so you do it this direction keep a few threads free so it doesn't obstruct the entrance Not too tight, otherwise you're gonna crack this. I can't say how tight is not too tight. It's a matter of feeling it. Then this one. So don't ask me why I put the stainless steel ones down and the nickel bronze ones here. This is how they were when I uh, took it apart and they were not cracked. So just to be sure. I put them back where they came from. Do the same here. And just like when you uh, take it apart, keep this in place with a 21 millimeter wrench. That's it. You do the same here. Not too tight. You can always fit it a little tighter if there would be some leak over here. So these are both done. And now I'm gonna put in the pistons. Again some grease on the leading edge. Which is this. Because that's how you're going to put them in. Nice and tight. Which is a good sign, I think. If it goes too easily, then the cylinders are probably too big for the pistons. Or the pistons too small for the cylinders. There they go. Be sure you put them in like this, that this hole is at this side because the rod has to go into there. So now the final assembly, I need some seals for these, that's the CVP thingies. That's this, should be right for here. Perfect. And then I'm gonna fit the cylinders on the center block. So what I'm going to do with the check valve, because it falls out when you try to put it in. First, put quite a lot of grease on the, on the seals for the check valves, so they stick nicely. They won't go anywhere. I'm going to put a little bit of grease on the tips of the bolts. That's where they go into the inserts. Put them in here already, which makes it easier to put everything together. Because I only have two hands and then I'm going to put this in upside down so I don't have to be afraid that it goes everywhere. See it's in there nicely and that's it. And 
That's it. And again, not too tight. Otherwise, this is gonna crack or you're gonna destroy the, those bronze fittings in here. step is going to be screwing this block onto the center block for which we need some seals of course again these ones are the only ones that fit over there valve port seals and then for the other holes these little ones so again some silicon grease to keep everything in place so when you put one block on the other they won't go anywhere watch out you don't drop the little ones in the bigger holes Especially when there's grease on it, it's hard to get them out, I guess. So that's it. For some reason, like with the other blocks, these balls don't slide through. Yeah, this one does, so this is good. But those ones needed a little, let's say, persuasion. So let's check if there's nothing on here. Yep. So carefully, so that the seals don't go anywhere. Put this block on that one. This is the front, pressure relief valve and feed water inlet. Underneath here are no metal inserts, so you screw into the plastic, so be careful. Hand tight, not too much. Again, not too tight, plastic. And then we have a fitting for this test board. And what I understood is that if you keep it open and all the seals are okay, no water is coming out. So I put it in a little and then we'll see later. So I need to guess again. I know what these are, but which seal do I need? So the only seal that I can find is those ones that fit. STF says, voila. 2 thirds, 16, whatever that may mean, straight thread o-ring, well every thread is straight I guess, but these ones seem to fit, so it's quite tight, but I don't have other uh, seals that fit, so no need for teflon tape in this case, because this o-ring makes this waterproof, if you want to be sure it's in the thread, turn back till you feel it click a little, I'm going to keep this a little loose for a while because I don't know precisely at which angle the high pressure hoses come in. And then at the front the feed water inlet which is just soft plastic so I hope no Teflon needed. And then the last one the brine discharge also softer plastic. So I hope I don't need any Teflon here. And it's not a high pressure. It's just what you throw overboard. I think I need some Teflon here because it goes too easy. So time to reconnect the clark pump to the membrane. Uh, I just flushed the membrane with fresh water because there's always a chance that there were particles of those corroded fittings in the membrane housing. So I flushed it to be sure that there ain't none. As you can see this lower fitting is high pressure outlet and this one is the high pressure inlet. That means that the high pressure is coming out of this one and needs to go to the membrane. Which side? As you can see over here it's on the sticker. The left side in my case is high pressure inlet, high pressure outlet. And probably the out could be both sides when you blind it. And the other one, 
which goes to the water flow meter. I'm not going to mount uh, the clock pump already on its socket because I first want to see if there's no leaks or whatever because if I mount it over here and something is leaking I need to get it off again. Waste of time. I'm gonna look what the angle must be from those uh, fittings. Yeah, I think it was like this. It's easier to do it here than when it's fixed in place over there. So I earlier screwed these in, um, except for a few turns. So there's some room left. Behind this are the seals. Not too tight, it's a seal that does the work. And then the other one. Push it in real good so the cone fits into this uh, conical hole. Again, if it's not tight enough, you can always tighten it up later. As far as you can, going into the hole. Again, don't overdo it. You can always tighten them up. Right output. And then salt water inlet. Not too crazy because there's no pressure on those. That's it, the system is ready. I already tested the water maker, filmed everything, and uh, I am editing all the footage right now, but I already have two uh, hours and 10 minutes of edited film. The next video is going to be the testing and getting everything right. If you are seeing this, you must have been watching a long time. So thumbs up for you. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you could use the footage and the information. Again, this is no tutorial. This is just how I did it. It works. And uh, well, I hope to see you next time. Mm -hmm.